All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. We appreciate you checking it out. Today is an interesting topic. Um, it is a little denser topic, so it is targeting those in uh, medicine or interested in medicine, whether it be a student, trainee, um, or practitioner out in the clinical arena. And it's part of our ventilator series. And today we're going to be talking specifically about a mode of ventilation known as volume control. Um, specifically assist control volume control or ACVC or assist volume control. All these are synonyms talking about the same thing. And this is a mode of mechanical ventilation. Uh, as a reminder, this is part of our ventilator series. We have done a handful of videos uh, within our ventilator series, auto peep breath stacking, air trapping, uh, two ventilator desynchrony videos, flow starvation, double triggering, premature cycling, breath stacking, blah, 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 blah. The first video in the series, though, is the important one that I wanted to point out, and that is this ventilator waveforms, scalars and loops, basic concepts, pressure, flow, and volume. And we'll link this in this video's description. I'll also try to link it in the top right corner here coming up, but this will give you a foundational understanding of the more advanced topics we're gonna to talk about today. So if you have not watched this video, we would highly recommend you check it out. Um, if you're comfortable with scalers already, uh, certainly you can just dive into this one. But uh, for those who are not, check out this video and then you'll be all caught up to watch the current video. So no further ado, stick around. Quick 30 second break for the introduction. Don't go anywhere, we'll see you right back. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So assist control volume controller or ACVC or assist volume control AVC or simply volume control. And this is what it's often referred to in the clinical arena. And that's what we're gonna use for the rest of the video is just call it volume control. Um, although we're talking about assist control volume control. And we're gonna use scalars to understand this. But before we dive into that, we wanted to just talk about volume control, what that meant. So this is a mode of ventilation. Uh, when you intubate someone and put them on a ventilator, you can select the mode, the way in which the ventilator is delivering that patient's ventilation. And when we talk about mode of, modes of ventilation, for most modes, and you know, most primarily being the two we use most often, volume control and pressure control. Volume control, which we're talking about in this video, and as the name implies, is where you control the volume. Makes sense. Pressure control is where you control the pressure. So in these two different modes of ventilation, the difference in what you set is in volume control, you set a tidal volume, and in pressure control, you set an inspiratory pressure. And what this means is the thing you're not setting in that mode is the uncontrolled variable. So in volume control, you're controlling the tidal volume the patient is getting with each breath, or the cc's of oxygen that the ventilator is pushing into the lungs with each breath. That's the tidal volume. But what you're not controlling, the uncontrolled variable that results from this, is the pressure, the inspiratory pressure, the peak pressure in this case. In pressure control, you're controlling the pressure. You're saying, hey, ventilator, with each breath, I want you to give a set pressure. What is uncontrolled, though, is then the tidal volume, and we'll put uncontrolled for these, because um, that's, a, that's a, the uncontrolled variable that results from the pressure you set. So what this means is there's kind of four main settings on a ventilator. There's certainly many more, lots of complexity there. But the four main settings, three are shared between these two modes of ventilation. And that is PEEP, or the positive end expiratory pressure. That is the FiO2, or the fraction of inspired oxygen. And that is the respiratory rate, or how many breaths per minute the ventilator is delivering. And these three are on 
both volume control ventilation and pressure control ventilation. And you're choosing these. You're saying, I want a PEEP of 5, an FiO2, a 60%, a respiratory rate of 20, or whatever you choose. And we're not going to be talking about each one of these in this video, although we certainly will in a future video. So definitely subscribe and stick around for that. The fourth setting on the ventilator is what's going to be different between volume control and pressure control. And for the sake of this video, again, we're going to do a video on pressure control, but this video we're talking about volume control. So what you're setting here is the tidal volume. And the tidal volume is the cc's or milliliters of air that the ventilator is going to deliver per breath. So I'm, you know, if you're in the clinical arena and you're setting a tidal volume, it might be I want the patient to get 400 cc's per breath 400 cc's of air or 500 or 350 or what have you um, and that is volume control ventilation what makes it different many things but in the settings what makes it different from pressure control is that you're setting a tidal volume that you want the patient to get with each breath now ventilators are smart there's lots of algorithms these days uh, let us mute that um, and the ventilator is not just going to give this tidal volume every time. The patient has some control over this um, because the ventilator is not just going to push this in no matter what, right? There's going to be some variability from breath to breath depending on if the patient is, you know, accepting that breath or if they're not very accepting of that breath. But about this tidal volume, the patient will get with each breath. And that affects our scalers. So when we're talking about volume control, you're going to see the front of a ventilator. So let's say you got a patient here, stick figure human, and they are intubated, unfortunately. They have bad pneumonia, so they have a breathing tube coming out of their mouth, and that breathing tube is you know, hooked up to a ventilator, and you have the ventilator screen. And every ventilator is different, but a lot of ventilators have these four settings on the bottom of the ventilator. All right, they have the PEEP, the FiO2, the respiratory rate, and then this fourth setting, if we're in volume control, so if this is ACVC, this is gonna be the tidal volume. And as we said, the uncontrolled variable here is the pressure. So often in the top right corner, you'll have a peak pressure, which is the pressure that the ventilator is experiencing each time it pushes in this tidal volume or the cc's per breath of air that you're setting. And on the front of the ventilator, oftentimes they show scalars. And these scalars are usually pressure over time, flow over time, and volume over time. And these scalars are going to look different depending on what mode of ventilation you're in. And it is important to understand how they differ with each mode of ventilation. And you can also identify the mode of ventilation a lot of times looking at the scalars. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about next in the video is the scalars that you will see in volume control or assist control volume control. The first one here is pressure versus time. So pressure on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. The second is flow over time. And the third is volume over time. And in volume control, the scalars you see are determined by how the ventilator is delivering the breath. All right. The volume scalar is the easiest to understand, so that's what we'll start with. So what you have with each breath, this is a single breath here. So this is one breath. And as you can see, the volume goes up for half the breath as the ventilator is delivering that breath, and then it goes down for the other half, right? That's as the patient is expiring. So this is inspiration, this is expiration. And this volume should be about what you set on the ventilator. It should be about that tidal volume. So if you set 400 cc's, each one of these breaths should be about 400 cc's of air. And you can see that repeated, right? Inspiration, expiration. Inspiration, expiration. Right? And this should be about 400 each time. And this would be three breaths, right? One breath, two breath, three breath. And this looks similar between volume control and pressure control. Uh, you get about, you know, the tidal volume is going to be different, but the, the scalar itself, the shape of it, inspiration and expiration is about the same, right? Because the volume goes up when they inspire, the volume goes down when they expire. And it goes, hopefully, to zero, right? Because you hopefully breathe out all the air you breathe in. And then when there's no air going in, when they're between breaths, you just have this volume at zero because they're between breaths, right? Breath one in, breath one out, no breath. Breath one, breath two in, breath two out, 
no breath. Breath three in, breath three out. So that makes sense, right? That's an easy one to understand. What about these other two scalars, though? You have flow and pressure. So as we said, when the ventilator delivers a certain volume, the ventilator is going to experience a pressure, right? Because if you push air into the lungs, there's going to be a pressure that develops that the ventilator senses while it's pushing that air in, all right? And that's going to vary depend on the cycle of the breath. But something to know about volume control is even though you're setting a tidal volume, the ventilator is actually targeting a flow. And this is going to make sense in a second. So if we talk about ventilators, oftentimes there's three things we think about with each breath. The trigger, or when the ventilator decides to give a breath. The target, or what the ventilator is targeting, because it needs to target something, right? Um, it's a ventilator, it's not a human, it can't think. So you have to tell the ventilator, I want you to target X with this breath. And then the cycle, or when the ventilator stops the breath. So the trigger, when the ventilator decides to start a breath, the target, or what it targets during that breath, and then the cycle, when it decides to stop a breath. And in volume control, the trigger is time. Makes sense, right? We said we set a respiratory rate. If we set the respiratory rate at 20, that means that every minute, every six, 60 seconds, the ventilator is saying that that patient needs to get 20 breaths every 60 seconds, or about one breath right, for every three seconds. And ventilators are smart now, and this is assist control, meaning the, the patient can also take their own breaths, and that counts towards the 20. But if the patient is not taking their own breaths, every three seconds, the, ven the, uh, the ventilator says, I need to give a breath, or that's my trigger. If there's not been a breath in three seconds, that triggers me to give a breath. So time is what triggers the ventilator to start a breath. We're going to skip target and come back to it and go with cycles. So what then causes the ventilator to stop a breath is the tidal volume. And what the ventilator targets is the flow. And this is where things get confusing. But if you understand this, you'll understand the scalars or possibly vice versa. So let's pause. I told you in volume control, you're setting a tidal volume for the ventilator to give with each breath, right? But I just then told you that the ventilator is targeting a flow. Well, what's that about? Why wouldn't it target a tidal volume, right? If I said, give it a certain tidal volume, why wouldn't it just target the tidal volume? Well, it is in a way, but it's in an indirect way because what causes the ventilator to stop a breath is the tidal volume. So if I tell the ventilator I want that person to get 400 cc's of air with each breath, the ventilator says, okay, I get that, I get that. I am going to target a flow. So flow is the amount, it's like uh, cc's per, of air per unit of time. So if I say, I want the patient to get 400 cc's, let's just do 500 because it's an easier number. The ventilator goes, no problem. I know that if each breath that I'm giving, I'm just making up numbers here, each breath that I'm giving is gonna be one second long and I need to give 500 cc's, I know how much air to flow in in that second. It's 500 cc's per second. Let's just say the breath is going to be two seconds long, right? So if the breath is two seconds long, the ventilator says, no problem. 500 over two seconds is going to be 250 cc's of air per second. And that's what I'm going to flow in because this is, you know, air cc's per unit time seconds. So what the ventilator actually targets is this flow, it's the cc's of air per second, because it knows then that it will give the tidal volume I'm setting over the duration of that breath. So it will give 250 cc's per second for the two seconds until it gets to the tidal volume I set of 500 cc's, right, 250 times two, and then it will cycle. It will say, stop the breath, that's the tidal volume they wanted, breath is over. And this then translates into why our pressure and flow scalars look the way they do. Because if you look over here and start with flow, what you see is flow is flat on the top, whereas pressure ramps up at the top. Now, why would that be? Because we are targeting a set flow. 
So over time, right? So the ventilator says, okay, 250 cc's per second of flow. I'm gonna just ramp up immediately to that set flow of 250 cc's over you know one second time, and then the flow just immediately goes to zero. This is inspiratory flow. And then this is negative because the patient's starting to expire. So this portion here, the positive portion is inspiration. This portion here goes all the way down to the negative portion is expiration. Because this here is zero flow, right? So now there's no flow when the breath is done being expired out until they inhale. You get your set flow rate. It holds that flow, 250 cc's per second. Okay, I got my tidal volume. I got to my 500 cc's of tidal volume. I'm going to just drop the flow, right? It just should, goes all the way back down to zero. But then the patient starts to breathe out and expire until it goes back to zero when the patient's breathed all the air out, right? And that's why in volume control, this top area is flat on top because the target is a flow rate. It's a constant flow rate until you get to the tidal volume that you set and at which point the ventilator stops flow and the breath is over. And that's also why you get this ramped up pressure because if you give a set flow rate, it's going to slowly build up the pressure in the lungs, right? You got two lungs here, you got a trachea that goes into these lungs and I'm pushing air in and that air has to expand the lungs, but the lungs, you know, aren't, they have a compliance, right? It takes effort to expand those lungs and overcome the lungs compliance, but that in turn creates pressure pushing back, right? Because those lungs are expanding and kind of pushing back as they expand. And that's what causes the pressure that is created. And, you know, peak and plateau pressures and things is going to be a different video. But when you set a set flow rate, that's going to slowly, as it flows air down and pushes those lungs out, build up an increasing pressure as more air is delivered into the lungs until you get to that point where the breath is done. You can see these line up, right? Breath is done, in which point the patient expires and the pressure drops back down to this set pressure, pressure, which if you watched our original video, this is the PEEP, the positive and expiratory pressure, which we won't go into here. Definitely check out that other video. And as you'll see, and we're gonna link all these in the video description when we talk about pressure control scalers, this looks different than a pressure control scaler. This ramp up is characteristic of volume control because you have a set flow rate, and as that flow over a period of time, let's just, again, make it up, say it's two seconds, for every one second, it's kinda, of pushing in 250 cc's per second, or you could break this down even further into milliseconds, but it's flowing a certain volume of air in per millisecond, and that is slowly filling up the lungs, increasing the pressure until that breath is over, at which point the patient expires and the pressure goes back to the end expiratory pressure that we set on the ventilator. All right, so this is very characteristic of volume control. You get this flat top at your flow scaler, you get this ramped up, pressure scaler, uh, and then volume con uh, the volume scaler is pretty constant between pressure control and volume control. It's pretty constant. All right, hopefully that was helpful. We know it's an advanced topic. Definitely check out those introductory videos, uh, and we'll have a whole ventilator series linked in this video's description. We appreciate y'all. Stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.